guess what? I'm going to show you something super exciting. It's how to make shrinky dinks. Now, this is about making a heart shrinky dink, but this is going to apply for any kind that you want to make. So you're going to be able to use these directions for any shrinky dink project. This one is just in particular for one about the heart. So these are the materials. <clears throat> The shrinky dink paper, obviously you need that. Markers and colored pencils, a heat gun, that's what I'm opting to use instead of the oven. A hole punch, a key ring, so you get to hang it, keep it. Uh, scissors, and then optional, which I'm going to provide for the heart one, is a pattern to trace. Okay, so your first step is to draw or trace your pattern. I am going to provide a pattern for this one, but in future projects or a different project, you're just going to draw it or trace something else. All right, this step is to draw or trace. So for this project, I gave a pattern and you have the shrinky dink paper. Now here's the important thing. It has a completely smooth side and then a kind of etched side. You're going to want to draw on that etched side, not the completely smooth side. So just be careful when you uh, choose the side you're going to draw on. And then you're going to cover up your pattern like this. Okay, let me just make a quick adjustment here. Okay. All right, and then what you're going to do, it doesn't matter what color. So see, you have an assortment of colors. I am going to use black, but that is not required. Any color uh, marky, so marky, marker. So using a Sharpie. So I was combining marker and Sharpie and came up with Marky. Interesting. All right, so this one is a anatomical sketch of the heart. Uh, it doesn't matter in what order you trace it, but you're going to want to make sure you get all the lines, okay? Unless you could see what I'm doing. another valve there, there. Okay, so again, you could see we're just carefully doing our tracing. If you are doing another project and you do not have something to trace, then at this point you would just be making your drawing. But for this, now my tracing job is not perfect by any means but gets the job done. So there you go. That is tracing or drawing your image. So just with markers. So there we go. That's what it looks like. So that's my first step. Okay, after you draw it or trace it, then you're gonna color it. And our coloring has two steps. So for our heart, we're gonna color the deoxygenated side of the heart, blue or purple. But again, if you aren't making a heart, then you're going to color as directed or as you want. Okay, so for this next part, okay, so I need colored pencils. That's what I'm going to use for the coloring. And it says to color the deoxygenated side, blue or purple. So I have a bunch of options. Okay, so I am going to use purple though. All right, and I'm going to want to color where the blood is um, when it is deoxygenated. So right there, I have superior vena cava down here inferior vena cava right here i have right atrium that receives the deoxygenated blood from the body down here i have right ventricle uh, and that receives the blood from the right atrium and then it's going to pump the blood through this major vessel right here which is the pulmonary trunk leading into the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery. Remember, arteries go away from the heart. And there you go. I have colored all of the deoxygenated um, vessels blue or purple. And then for this project, we are going to color the oxygenated side of the heart red or pink. 
Okay, again, I'm using colored pencils, and this time I'm going to color the oxygenated vessels red or pink. So I'm going to start with the path that it goes. So these are the pulmonary veins coming back from the lungs. The blood is then going to go into the left atrium, and then it is going to get pumped from the left atrium into the left ventricle. Okay, and then from the left ventricle, it is going to get pumped into the aorta, the largest blood vessel in your body, about the size of a garden hose. So that's pretty big. Okay, so up here, and this piece down here is the aorta comes down behind the heart. So this vessel right here, don't forget that one, that's the descending aorta down here. So there we go. Now we have our design colored. Okay, next we're going to trim the design with scissors because we're going to have some extra um, material and we don't want that. So trim it with scissors. All right, my next step here, I have my beautiful colored design. Okay, now I have scissors. I'm going to trim my design with scissors. What I want to be careful of is that I don't actually cut my design. Okay, so I don't have to get exactly to the edge, all right, because I don't want... Uh, to damage my design. All right, so leaving a little bit of space around is completely fine. I just don't want to damage what I've colored. So see over here, I'm just going to kind of kind of loop around like that over here. Okay, so again, I'm just trimming relatively close. Okay, but I don't want to cut off one of the vessels. Okay, or cut off a chunk of the heart in this case. I don't want to do anything like that. So really carefully like that. All right, so here you can see it. That's the um, smooth side, but this is the side I colored and put the markers on. Here's my extra pieces. All right, so there we go. I have my design trimmed and ready. Okay, now you're going to slowly heat it with the heat gun, and it's going to take a couple minutes, so don't go too quickly. Um, it's going to try to curl, so you want to try and keep it as flat as possible. Um, you could use a chopstick, a metal ruler, a spatula, whatever tools have been provided. Okay, now I'm ready to heat it, but let's get rid of all these materials from around here. So let's clean up. Let's put our colored pencils back. We don't need those. Let's put our markers back. We don't need those, okay? Um, I don't need this pattern, okay? All I need is this right here. Now, before I am ready to heat it, okay, I'm gonna use this. Uh, I have a few heating mats, so I'm gonna put it on here, all right? And then I am going to, let me just switch this a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, here, so here's my heat gun, the one I have right here, turn it on. I'm going to use um, a metal spatula, so you don't want to use a plastic one, to help kind of try to keep it straight. All right, now when I'm heating, I do not want to touch the heating gun directly to it. I want to kind of let it uh, be a little bit further away from it. Okay, it's okay, so I do not want it directly on top. I'm going to leave a little bit of space. All right, so I'm going to turn it on. It's going to be a little harder to hear. shrinking up but I kind of hold it down with the spatula so that it doesn't curl up too much. Okay. See that curling? I'm going to try to keep it from curling as much as I can. Pressing it with the spatula. has quite a bit more to shrink. Okay, so I'm kind of doing it a little bit in waves. Right. And then I have a little bit, see this sometimes this happens. See I kind of have a little bit of fold there. I'm gonna turn I'm gonna turn this off. I have a little bit 
a fold kind of going on there. So I'm just going to try to see if I can keep that from happening. All right. So we still have a lot of shrinking to go. So remember using the spatula. I think I'm going to bend it there. All right, let's flip it. my fold kind of corrected itself because I still had a lot of shrinking left to go. Be able to get rid of might not be able to get rid of that one but it's pretty good while it, it's it's kind of hot so you have to be careful but I think that's about as small as we are going to go okay uh, and see it's already it's already hardening right now so as soon as you stop heating it there we go uh, so I think that that looks pretty good we do have a little bit of a fold and that's gonna kind of happen as you do it the slower that you heat it the better that it's going to go but you can see how small that got again this is our here's our smooth side see that this is the side that we colored uh, and there you have it how to use the heat gun to shrink it remember this 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 tool is important okay I prefer to do it this way so you don't have to worry about it afterwards um, use a punching tool um, and punch a hole um, for the key rings that we're going to be using you're going to need to punch kind of three holes close together to make a little bit bigger of an opening but the nice thing about the punching tool is it goes through after it's been shrunk a regular hole punch won't go through that and you have to do it before which if that's a part that curls it becomes problematic so using a punching tool is definitely superior okay for this next step i do not need to have the heating mat so i have just two stations with the heating tool so i don't need that so I'm just going uh, to get one of these. This is the punching tool. So see this? That's pretty sharp right there. Okay, that is what I'm gonna punch. So I'm gonna hold it like this to bring that down. So I'm gonna decide where on this heart I want the hole to be. So I think I'm gonna put it in the aorta, okay? Now I want it relatively close to the edge. So I think I'm gonna do it right here. Want it relatively close to the edge. Hold on, let me adjust this focus a little bit. There we go. I want it relatively close to the edge, but not right at the edge because it will tear. So I'm going to make three little holes close together. So one, okay, see one little hole. I'm going to make another one real close to it. I just want the hole to be a little bit bigger. So sometimes the next one doesn't punch quite as smoothly. There we go. All right, and a third one, just to get the hole 
big enough. So you see sometimes it slips a little bit, that's okay. All right, I think we have our hole a good size. We can always adjust it if we need to, all right? So there we go, we have our, our hole, we have our heart, okay? That one little curve kind of bugs me, but it happens. This little curve right here too. All right, that's it. That's how you get your holes ready for the next step. Okay, and then for ours, we're gonna add a key ring at the end. Okay, so we're on to our last step. We need to add the key ring. So this hole is to put the key ring through. So when you have a key ring like this, this opens on this side and it opens on this side. So if you ever had to try to wiggle a key on, all right, so what I need to do is kind of open it and slide it over to the hole, okay? Oops, get back on there. Okay, open it, slide it over to the hole, and then I'm gonna rotate, okay? See how it's standing up like this? And now I'm gonna turn, 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 keep turning that keychain. It's gonna get a little snug at this point keep turning and voila now it is connected on here okay um, it can fit through even at the biggest part do you see it will tend to go right there and there you have there is your anatomically correct shaded heart shrinky dink okay so again this works for no matter what kind of pattern you're using and then you can put this where you want hang it on your backpack uh, key ring, whatever you want. So there you go. Heart shrinky dink. And voila, there you go. You finished. And that's it. That's heart shrinky dinks. But again, we're doing this one for the heart. This can be used for anything just following the same pattern. I hope you learned something new.